Hi guys, my name's Jeff. I'm with the Caddy Shack. We're uh, Cadron carburetor experts. Do a ton of them. Do hundreds and hundreds of these carbs. We really specialize in these things. We wanted to try to make a video, put it out there to make it easy for you guys to set up your carburetors. Install them, tune them, dial them in, and uh, let's roll up our sleeves, get to work. Alright guys, we're going to start with the linkage here. Uh, we need to do some modifications of the linkage before we start uh, our build and start to uh, install these things. These are basically the linkage pieces that um, come in our package. Uh, the link arms, the pivot point, a couple little pieces to hold them all together. First thing we're going to do, get rid of the gold spring. And uh, we really don't need this piece to start with. So we're going to take this one off. I don't know if I can do it with one hand. Anyway, we'll remove that piece. Um, We'll set that aside. We use dual springs on ours. I'll show you how to set those up later. And um, what we need to do first is um, take these pieces off because you'll see, you'll notice that, that, let me see if I get a picture there. One is over the other one on the linkage pivot post. So what we're going to do is we're going to flop these around and put uh, both of them on the same side and that'll help, that'll help clear the alternator. Let me, uh, let me get that done real quick. Okay, we finished uh, swapping the linkage over. Let me show you what we got here. Um, there's the linkage arms here and the pivot post. It's all attached. Basically, the pivot post will have the little, uh, I don't know if you can see it, the little the washer underneath it, the pivot post itself. This thing here is the nut that attaches. It's a lock nut. Basically, that gets down to the point where it's really close but not binding at all. Um, you'll notice we swapped the linkage arms um, right here. So the longer arm goes on the bottom, the shorter arm goes on the top. Okay, got that? Um, this piece here is the bolt we took out of the linkage post and we will be using this to install the linkage post later in the case. The two nuts that come out of the linkage post are basically you double nut the nuts together, remove the bolt from the case, uh, the engine case as you're installing the linkage. We'll go over that in a second. Uh, the linkage levers we will actually install on the carburetors themselves, we don't use them as linkage levers, we use them as spring tabs, and we'll go over that a little bit also. Alright guys, here we are on the engine here. We've got the carbs installed, manifolds and everything, kind of pre-set up. Uh, let me walk you through a couple of quick things that will really help you out a bunch. Uh, first of all, we'll go down here. This is the stud in the case that needs to be uh, removed or replaced with that bolt. That's what those two nuts were for on the linkage we looked at earlier. Okay, walking over to this side. Um, this is the idle speed screw right here. This is what adjusts your idle speed on the carburetors. Um, over here, uh, that's a vacuum port we've added for SVDA. It doesn't apply on this particular carburetor, but it's there. This here, where is it here? That's your idle mixture screw. That's for adjusting the idle mixture. Uh, while we're here, that's your idle jet. So you can see what that jet looks like, where it is on the carburetor. And this here is your accelerator pump and the drive rod for adjusting the accelerator pump. Um, you'll also see that we have the, uh, the balance tube uh, capped off on this particular set. This motor here is um, more of a high performance motor. It's a, uh, it's a 2054. It's got a big cam in it, big heads in it. It's got 44 carbs on it. Uh, pretty high performance stuff. You're gonna notice that when we get it fired up, it's not gonna idle like your standard 1600 or, you know, smaller can in the world. So, basically, that's the tour there. When we start adjusting this, um, we hook up the carburetor linkage on the passenger side first. Um, you'll notice that the screw is way backed out on this thing here, about as far as it'll go. Um, when we hook that up, we set it down. Let me get you a shot straight across the top see if I can get to that. We want this thing here to be right in there, just barely missing that, uh, that uh, pivot point bracket as we cycle the linkage forward and backward. Um, it will just miss that. What that's going to do is when your accelerator cable is hooked up, that's going to provide you with the most throw for your accelerator cable so you will get full pedal travel on the carburetors. When you adjust that, make sure that your idle speed screw is off the stopper. Can you see the stopper there? There's the stopper. It's off the stopper on both sides. We run over to this side here. You'll notice the idle speed 
screw is off the stopper there. Um, basically, what we want to do is we want to be able to just slide the screw in without moving either carburetor. That there ensures that both carburetors are fully closed and if the linkage and everything is properly set up, both carburetors will, will open exactly the same rate. Let me tighten that screw down that holds that together and I'll get right back to you. Okie dokie. I wanted to explain something real quick first on how to do this. Um, the throttle levers, basically how to adjust this, this end to, to where you can get that screw in. Um, basically, when we start on the other side, we, we set the stopper over there. This thing has a left-hand thread and a, and a right-hand thread um, on, the, on the tie rod for the linkage. So when you, when you take these nuts loose, this linkage will swivel in and out and it will make it expand and contract. That's basically how you get that screw to where it lines up exactly with that hole. Okay, let's talk for a minute about uh, how to set these springs up. You'll see there's two holes for the spring tabs here. Generally, we're gonna put the springs on the, the inner hole rather than the outer hole. If you need more tension, then you put the spring tab on the outer hole. If you need less tension, put it on the inner hole. Okay, now we're back. Um, once the idle speed screw, the linkage is hooked up, the idle speed screws, um, we want to go ahead and put them on the, right here. Uh, we want to put them back on the, on the stoppers um, so they're fairly even. You're going to want to give it a turn or two just to get this thing fired up. Um, once it's fired up, we'll get it warmed up and start adjusting. I might need two hands to do this. We'll turn on our, our uh, run stand here. Let's picture the back of the engine. We've also got the uh, the uh, hardline kit installed on this engine. Um, let's see if we can do this. Start it up. Engine's cold, so naturally we're going to need to get this thing running a little bit better. Uh, actually, it's idling okay right now. The next thing, basically, you want to do. You want to let this engine warm up a little bit before you start making your adjustments. Uh, a little shaky like we were talking about. It's got the uh, big cam in it. Pretty big motor. It's, uh, it looks like it's walking away from the two on the engine stand, so we'll have to block that. Let me let this engine warm up, let it up a little bit, see how it sounds. And Just the idle mixture now. Basically, this is how this works here. Uh, the engine's nice and warm. Uh, adjust the screw in, basically, until the idle speed starts going down a little bit. You can see it go down, you hear it go down. Bring it out until the idle speed comes back up. And you're pretty much done at that point. Uh, we're going to do the other side. You might go back and forth a couple times with both sides. We're going to adjust the idle speed next. Basically, if you need your idle speed a little higher, you're going to turn this screw here. This one will, and the other one, will, they will do both at the same time. You uh, will just adjust, adjust the other idle speed to match. Basically, we're going to put this back down to kind of where we like it. I usually like to have these. I've got 1100 RPM warmed up with a little low. It's a little lumpy in a pan. That's pretty much right about where we need to be. It's a little speed on this thing. Basically, the mixture screw on this side here, um, you can do, you can access it by taking the screwdriver, get a real long screwdriver, real skinny one. We ended up uh, running it right down through by the fan shroud. It's obviously a little bit easier with a 36 horsepower fan shroud. As the stock kind of fan shroud comes around a little more, it's a little closer, the screwdriver will actually be behind that fan shroud there. But it is accessible, as you can see. 
on the moving over to the uh, the pasture side. Um, what we need to do is we need to take this air cleaner off and and to access access the screw from the top side. With this air cleaner moved out of the way, you can actually drop this screwdriver right down and get to the idle mixture screw on that side. Okay. Next, what I wanted to go over is some fine tuning kind of stuff here. Um, Basically, uh, you might be wondering what this nut does here. Uh, it's really tough to get it to in some, in some engine bays, it's easier in others. Basically, this nut is your accelerator pump um, that adjusts the amount, uh, adjusts the amount of, of pump travel that you have in this lever. Um, you'll need a seven millimeter nut driver or a similar wrench uh, to get down in here. When we do these and set them up for you, we try to set these as, as, as close as we possibly can so you're not going to need one monkey with these things. Um, occasionally you will need to. So basically, as you, as you thread this nut in, and I don't have a nut driver in front of me because these are already preset. Um, as you thread this, this nut in, it's going to give you more pump. So it's going to squirt more, more fuel down in the carburetor as you cycle the linkage. And let me cycle that linkage just to show you how that thing moves. Okay. Um, the, the more you turn the nut out, the less that's going to actually cycle the linkage. Uh, I'm sorry, the less it's going to actually give you squirt. So basically, um, if you're having a popping sound as you accelerate or you're having a flat spot, uh, you will need to adjust these nuts on both sides of the carbs. Um, if it's a pop and, and it's giving a popping sound, it's generally an indication that it's lean as you're cycling your linkage. So you'll want to move the nut in. Um, if it is, uh, if it's, if it's, has a hesitation, I don't know how quite to explain it, but it's kind of a gurgling sound, kind of a <coughs> dead spot, kind of a, you might be getting too much fuel. You'll see that at going out the tailpipe as you cycle that linkage too, if you're playing with the carburetors. Um, and you'll get black smoke basically coming out the tailpipe. That indicates that you're getting too much pump right here. So, um, again, the pump is what sh shoots, uh, fuel down in the carburetor, and that's all assuming that your jetting is proper for the application. Um, these are not a one-size-fits-all kind of carburetor. Um, yeah, the same housing and everything, but you know, a 1600 motor is going to be jetted differently than an 1835, and that's going to be jetted differently than a 2054, and the heads, the cam, the compression, the exhaust, all of that play into the jetting. Uh, we're pretty much no, we're pretty close on all of our jetting combinations. If you need help with jetting or any other things with the carburetors themselves, please give us a buzz. Hope you enjoyed the uh, carburetor uh, Caddyshack Cadron Tech Clinic. Thanks a bunch. Okay guys, one last thing before we call it a day here. Uh, I want to talk about throttle bodies and you're never going to be able to get those carburetors synced right and running evenly on both sides. The linkage is going to stop if you have play in your throttle bodies. So I wanted to show you a throttle body that, that is, um, before it's rebushed, a, a throttle body that needs rebushing. I wanted to show you a throttle body that's after rebushing. See the difference here. Um, I don't know if you can see that or not. Can we get in there, the camera? Not too close because it'll blur out. But um, basically, if you can see that moving back and forth, that's leaking a ton of air right there. And it's also causing the carburetor linkage to move around. So... When that thing is leaking air, I mean, you may close the throttle body, and, and one day it may idle at 800 RPM. The next time you close it down, it may idle at 1,200 RPM. You're just never going to get that sync right with that carburetor moving around so much. Um, this is a throttle body that we've actually rebushed here in-house at the Caddyshack. And basically, um, you know, there is no play at all in that thing. So that should really help us uh, keep those things really tight, really nice, smooth. Uh, the bushings we use are pretty pretty nice bushings. They're a whole lot better than the stock ones. I'd show you that too, but we probably don't have all day to <laughs> keep doing. We could do an hour tour of how we do all this stuff, and maybe we'll do that someday. But for now, you know, we appreciate you walking, you know, coming by and visiting with us and, and learning how to do these carburetors and how to set them up. If you've got any questions at all, please call us. I mean, that's what we're here for. That's what we do, and uh, we appreciate it. All right, take care.